Well, a decision has been made to go ahead and replace the crankshaft in this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, make this as light as possible before I need to pull it out of the cases. So with that, we're gonna pull the clutch cover off and everything over here we can pull off. Then we're gonna switch to the other side and pull that down, but we won't be able to go all the way down with it because I don't have the flywheel puller here. I'll have to bring it home and we'll do that part of it. But right now, we're gonna pull this clutch cover off and to do that, we're going to pull the skid plate off of it, and then we're going to pull the brake lever, the, sway, the kick starter, and we're also going to pull the water pump because we're going to replace the water pump seals while we're here. So let's get at it. Oh, man. It's an 8, not a 10, by the way. And she's fairly tight. Sounds like the grease worm is starving to death needs to be fed. There we go. Now, there's a washer that sits behind this. We want to make sure that we keep track of it. This washer right here. And we need to get this bolt out of here so we can start it back in there. I like starting stuff back in so I know where it went. She's not very willing to come out of there. Let's get the impact on the end of the bolt and then we'll twirl it and push at the same time. There we go. Yep, that's why the grease worm was biting. We're just going to flip this around and let it hang. Remember while I go and I said everything was a struggle? Everything is a struggle. I'm not starting that back in there because I don't think it'll fit through there. However, we will start our brake bolt back in here. All right, this one's moving too. These will feel like silicone reader heroes. There we go. There we go. All right, first we're gonna pull the water pump ones. Oh goodness. She's a peeing everywhere. One bolt and we've already made a mess. Might be a record. Now I use brown paper bags to keep track of my bolts. So every time I take something off, I'm going to set them inside of here, and uh, these are a little smaller than I normally use, but I'm going to lay these in here along with this water pump cover, and that will make sure that I know those bolts hold that cover on. Kind of like that. Whoa. Eh, let's pull the gasket off and we'll throw it in there as well. We're going to check for loose dowel pins. If any of those are loose, we're going to throw them in there as well. I think this cover will come off without pulling that impeller off. Could be wrong. I have been many, many times. Heck yeah, I went in the drain pan. You know it did. That should be all the bolts to hold the whole side cover on. Give it a little tappy tap tap. This is a very light, soft-faced hammer, so if it looks like I'm wailing the crap out of it, really I'm not so much. We got a dowel pin hanging up down here. Let's give it just a little pry. I think we might be past it now. Try to get all that to stay there. Yeah, well, not too bad. We're gonna pop this clutch out of here, and then we'll kind of go over some of the stuff you need to be aware of under this cover. So far, nothing too amazing.
that's the recluse part right there. Pull our push rod out. This has a little bearing on here, so the clutch pressure plate can spin separately from this. Get our chisel, it looks a whole lot like a straight screwdriver here. Pop back the locking ears. And we'll give her the old magic of the impact here. See if we can get her knocked loose. Why, that didn't take a whole lot. And I'm just stacking everything up in the clutch cover in the order it goes, but it's pretty hard to get it messed up if you've ever done one of these before. If you haven't, then you probably ought to be able to pay attention to how it's going. Hmm, oh. I thought we were missing a washer, but it was just stuck to the back of the inner basket. So, a washer goes in there, sits inside this groove right here, and it holds that bearing down. Holds him in place. This bearing. is a double-sided or double-roller needle bearing. Doubled-up needle bearing? I don't know. It is what it is. Clutch is out. With the clutch out, then we can pull this gear off. It just sets on the shaft. There's a collar. That sits under it. Make sure you grab that before it gets away from you. And with that, let's pull out the kickstart shaft. It's got a spring on it that we're going to unwind. Like so. And then we're going to pull this sweetheart out. We're going to back it off some. Pull it out so that paw clears that. So what I want to show you here is there is a couple of timing marks. All right. What I want to show you is there's a couple of timing marks right here. Focus. All right, right there. See the dots? Right there and there. Here and there. Those are timing marks, and it's critical that this balancer shaft gets lined back up with that. Those two right down in there are the ones that really matter for that timing gear. So that's that. I wanted to show you that. I'll show you again when we're going back together. It is important. It can. We just got to get the crankshaft to hold still. Okie doke. This gear is missing a spline right here, and that's how you align it. I went around to the other side, and I pulled the uh, shifter off so we can pull the shift shaft out of this thing. And that's it. This sticks out the other side. Your foot shifter goes on it. There's also a shim that sits on this one. We're going to put him right there on that shaft. Might as well be now. Got us another paper bag to put those parts in. Now, there is a collar right here. Make sure that does not get lost. You know, if you're doing this yourself. Not sure I advise doing it yourself, but this has paws in it that actually do the shifting. Don't lose the spring. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Get our sprocket out of the way. And there's a collar that lays behind there. And I'm probably going to replace this because it's got grooves in it where the seal's been running. So let's see how hard it is to get this swing arm bolt out of here. Because it goes through the engine cases. So we'll see if it's willing to cooperate. So far, so good, I think. Yep, I would say not. We got a trick for that. <clears throat> I wouldn't say a trick, I would say more brute force. There she moved. Yeah, these things always get hung up in the engine cases, and uh, we'll check our swing arm bearings here and see how bad a shape they're in as well. That's as long a bit as I have here to drive that, so we'll have to do the rest by hand. 
Doesn't seem to. There we go. And this will give you a reason why it's so hard to get out. Is this baby, she's got some junk on her. We have to figure something out though. This one I can get on pretty easy. And he comes out. Now there's a washer on here to protect the aluminum. We can pop that sweetheart loose. There we go. We'll just take that cover off because it's just going to dangle in the way. All right, that's done. Why are you hung up? I think I might have to rotate the shock back too. Get this sweetheart out of here. Let me take that shop, top shock bolt out and then we'll rotate it back. Everything's hung up. There we go. Now we probably have room. We gotta get our engine above the swing arm in order to pull this thing out of here. I don't know if you had the best view, but it's about as good as it's gonna get. So. She's out. This is the spacer that goes through the swing arm bearing. I'm gonna pull the spacer out and see what kind of condition it's in. And I have, I was looking for a pair of uh, Nipex pliers. And I'm gonna come in here and just pop this sweetheart out. Mm. Yep, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah. They're pretty rusty and crusty. Yeah, we'll have to see what we want to do about that. I am uncertain at this point. You can see on this spacer where it is rusted to it. Nut and washer. Now this flywheel puller, this is a piece that is designed to save the crankshaft. And it screws onto the threads that the nut was on and it saves that crankshaft. Now this crankshaft, we're replacing it, but still I don't want to destroy it just for the sake of destroying it. So we'll uh, run this out of ways, thread this onto the flywheel. And then we'll run this back in. Now I'm going to whack that with the impact and a 14 socket. Here we go. <laughs> Wrong way. Here I am just killing myself trying to get it to come off and it's already off. Get our cam chain out of the way and pop this sweetheart out of the way. Set that cam chain tensioner over there. Guide tensioner, it does both. It guides and tempered and tensions. We'll just run that back in place so it stays there nice and pretty. I don't know if our new crankshaft actually comes with a key or not, but I'm gonna leave it in this crankshaft just for the sake of not losing it. There we go. A couple of things to note here. This weight, has to line up with that mark on these threads here. It's got its own timing mark that lines up with the other timing mark. And it's stamped out. It's good to know these kind of things. This is our counterbalancer shaft. Look at the slack in that bearing. Yep, that'll need to be replaced. Now I did not bring home a case separator, so that might be a joy in this thing too. So we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. And you know, I'm okay with that because there's a good chance most of you guys watching this don't have a case separator. So we're gonna do it all old school. I'm gonna get us an eight millimeter socket here and just go to town.
We're gonna put that back on that bolt so we know which one goes there. Solve a little bit of mystery. And like I pulled two stroke, this has a set of bolts inside too. I think we'll go ahead and get this tube out of our way. We are gonna pull this off. This is our all pump drive gear because we gotta get to a bolt underneath there. And I don't wanna do anything to damage this gear. Right now, it's in pretty stinking good shape. And I kinda wanna keep it that way. This is the other end of the balancer shaft. It drives the oil pump as well. There's our snap ring or our circlet right there. Then this gear should just pull off and there's probably a pin behind it. it holds it to the shaft. Yep, there he is. He just fell out. We got him. There's always one more until there's not. Uh-huh, there we are. This is what the inside of the case looks like. Not too much sludge in there. It's not too bad. This is two separate chambers. The transmission runs in its own oil and the engine runs in a separate base of oil. There's our crankshaft. Bottom end looks good, no signs of oil starvation. Anything like that, so. Outside of the top of it, that's the only reason it's getting replaced. This is where the oil pump runs. You can see this is not in bad shape at all. It actually looks pretty stinking good considering this is a, what is this thing? It's a 2005, so this is a 20, now this is a 17 year old motorcycle, so. Now, this serves a very important purpose on this bike. This is a reed valve, which is nothing more than a one-way gate. If you can see that. What it does, is it allows oil to pass through here when there's positive crankcase pressure and not come back when there's negative. This crankshaft only runs in the amount of oil it needs. It gets lubricated, it goes down here into this chamber. Set this up a little bit. There's our balancer shaft. But it comes up and it gets lubricated, it's pressure lube. There's a jet right there to cool the piston down. And then the crankshaft itself is pressure lubed. And as the oil runs past and runs back down in here, it goes down this chamber. And this valve is sitting here kind of like this. So whenever the piston comes down and creates positive crankcase pressure, this opens and allows the oil to be pushed back into the oil tank, which is essentially where the flywheel is. This works as the oil tank. These is the inner and outer of the tachoidal oil pump. And there's just not much happening there. It looks pretty good. Go down in the comments there and let me know, would you replace this oil pump when you had it apart this far? I don't know. It looks pretty darn good. Let me know what you think. And uh, parts are pretty slow coming. Uh, so I'll be able to read your comments before because this is just going to be a teardown video. Then we're going to put it back together in a separate video. Let's take a look at our transmission and uh, see what we got going on there. I'm going to pop this shaft out of here that holds two of the shift forks. Rise. There's one of them. What we're looking for on these is to see if there's any damage either on these or up here where they're bent. That one looks pretty good. You can see just a tiny bit right there. Not too surprising. See if we can get this other one to push back out of the way here. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just pull the transmission out of this thing. We'll set it on the bench and take a look at it. What do you think of that? I think it's a good idea. Pull our other shaft for our shift forks out. Shift drum's ready to come out. And then we'll just take all this at once up and out of here. Well, most of it anyway. We'll roll this over and we want to watch to make sure we get all our washers back in the right place. That goes there. And then this goes here. This collar, which does not have an oil hole in it, just sits on here. Let me set this shaft down for a moment. This goes on here. This goes underneath this gear and it's an idler. It just runs on there. And then we have another washer and then we have another gear. 
and then the washer it goes on the outside of it. These washers are critical. They got to be in the right place and they got to be the right ones and the right thickness. If I ever get around to lining this up, it'll slide right on there. There we go. And that goes on there and that gets us down to the bearing on that shaft. Let's set that one aside. This one, we have a washer. Needs to go back on here. A collar, bushing, if you will, gear, and then another washer. That is the output shaft. Let's move our cases out of the way and let's talk about this transmission for a moment. Move our blocks. Pull our pig mat over here. There we go. This is just a balancer shaft, but it's important to note there's a seal on here, and that seal has to be in there. Our kit should come with a seal. Isn't that cool, the way those lines are on there? That's where the other gear runs. I think that's the oil pump gear. Okie doke. Let's just take a look at this real quick. This, if you're wondering, goes right on here inside that seal to, to take up space between the seal and the washer. Just helps it seal. Let's take a look at our other shift forks real quick. This one also looks very good. That's what we looked at before. And this one looks good. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure the shafts they ride on are straight. To do that, we could chalk up and drill and just turn them and see. But what I want to look for is any kind of wear marks on this thing. And uh, it looks pretty darn good. There's another shaft that also holds shift forks. Here it is. And it also looks fine. So that part's all great. Now, let's take a look at our gears here real quick. This is the output shaft or counter shaft. And uh, this is the input shaft. And they go together just like that. And you can tell this is first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, just by gear size, the ratios. First gear will always have the smallest on the input and the largest on the output shaft. Fifth gear is exactly backwards. It will always have the smallest and the largest on the other way. Well, I'm sorry, largest and smallest. So that makes up our gear ratios. Now, these slide back and forth to engage different gears, and that's what these do. They go in here, and as you shift, it goes back and forth. This end of the shift forks follow these patterns in the shift drum. Let's take a look at this real quick. We'll discuss it. This has patterns in here that these shift forks follow whenever it's shifting, and that forces them from one side, forces them one way or another. <clears throat> you can see this one's gonna shift that way there. This very stroke is gonna shift this way. So they're gonna follow these around and this is gonna be a different shift fork and it's gonna come down around here and it's gonna have one bump in it and that's gonna engage just one gear. And that's the one on the opposite shaft. These two are on the one shaft and uh, it's gonna follow around and it's gonna have another bump up here that's gonna bump it back. Boom, right there and there. This is neutral, there's a gear, there's a gear, there's a gear as it comes around and this one on the opposite side Here's gear there. That makes up all five speeds, and these are move back and forth. When they do, they force the gears back and forth, such as this. The dog set on here like this, and this one moves back and forth, and it engages in the side of this gear. And that's where we're gonna see a lot of damage or wear if this thing hasn't been shifted right. This transmission looks pretty darn good. This is an intake valve. This is an exhaust valve in this head. Let's flip this sweetheart over. And you can see this head really isn't in bad shape. However, there is a problem with this head. There's no, I can't see any cracks around any of the valve guides. They all look pretty good. Uh, when I get it cleaned up, it'll tell more because I will take this thing and bead blast it or vapor blast it and uh, get it cleaned up even better. However, this has a problem with the intake valves. These valves have worn into the seals. Now these are Kibble White stainless valves. So, They've kind of taken a beating and got back in there somewhat. Now, there's been a lot of hours since this thing was torn down, so I'm really not gonna blame the guy that owns it much, but I'm gonna get you closer in here 
and we're going to talk about what happens to these intake valves. These intake valves wear in, and I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up. And look, I'm looking at the screen on the camera, but it's not going to show me much. There is a divot in this valve. It should be flat like this exhaust valve is, but there's a divot. And if I hold this up here, and if I could ever get the angle just right, you could probably see how much of a divot there is in this valve. So let me make sure it's focused in the right place. And you can see that this valve should be straight with this edge, but it's not. It's got a divot in it. This edge of this valve is pretty sharp where it's worn down in there. Now, that's what makes these things go tight whenever this wears out. Uh, there's probably been a little bit of dirt over the years stuck through this engine from either improper air filter maintenance, or it could be just wear over time. But uh, this thing is pretty sharp on the edges and it's worn down into it. Now, if I put this back in the head here and pop that in there, bring it up just a touch, then this is seated way down in here. You can't really catch a piece of this with your fingernail around the valves. It should have a little bit of space where it doesn't completely sit down in there. This valve is done. We got new valves coming for this. We are gonna cut these seats and I'll do that on camera so you can see how that's done. Or I may have another guy do it and film him doing it if he's willing. But uh, that's what happens to the intake valves on these is they wear into the head right here. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you're not subscribed and also go down and uh, leave comments what you'd have done different during this tour teardown and if you saw anything i didn't i'd be more than happy to entertain any suggestions you guys have uh, we're not going to replace anything in the transmission what we are going to replace is all the valves in this thing and we're also going to replace the crankshaft in it and selected other items piston rings all that our cylinder looks good we showed it to you earlier so anyway go in the comments Tell me what you'd have done different. I appreciate it. Thank you and God bless. I'll bring you back when we're putting it back together.